Hi everyone, it's Casey Williams. You know, the car we have today is kind of a mutt of a car, but it's a very lovable little mutt. You know, you look at it, you think it's a Subaru, but it's kind of a Subaru and kind of not. What it is, it's the BRZ, and it's a joint venture with Toyota that's now born three different models of a very similar car. But I like the car a lot. So let's kind of have a look at it and see why kind of this mixed marriage and breeding turns into a pretty decent car. Well, for those of you who aren't aware, let me give you a little history of the BRZ's family tree. It's a joint venture between Toyota and Subaru, and today it is born three different vehicles. We've got the Subaru BRZ, we also have the Scion FRS, which has now evolved into the Toyota 86 as Scion has gone away. And honestly, none of that really matters, because what we ended up with is a nice little rear drive car. And you heard that right, it's a rear drive Subaru. It's the only Subaru that's dedicated rear drive. But for this little car, I think that works out okay. We won't get into the marketing of that, it's a whole different issue. But the other things I like about the car, and this is what's really smart, both the Toyota and Subaru versions use the four-cylinder flat four from Subaru. It's a great application for that little four-cylinder engine. It works really well in sports cars. And we'll talk more about that engine in a little while. But you know what, there, there are some family resemblances to the other Subaru products, but it's not exactly as blatant as, you know, maybe an Impreza or an Outback would be. The headlamps and tail lamps are kind of squared off. They do seem connected to the other, other Subaru products. But you know, we've got LED headlamps. I think they look really good. I like the lower fascia, it looks pretty aggressive. LED running lamps. Come around the side, and you really get this long hood, short deck proportion. It's just very classic sports car. The car's kind of hunkered down, curves in all the right places. I think it looks very good. 17 inch alloy wheels. See the red Brembo brake calipers behind it. They uh, stop as well as they look. Come around the back. Again, I think just very nice proportions. I like the way the fender comes back, looks good. Little spoiler, flat back here. Twin exhaust openings. Kind of a little bit of a diffuser look down below, I think looks really good for the car. And you know, for a sports car this size, it actually has a fairly decent sized trunk. You can get a couple bags back here, get your computer, a couple computer bags in here. And I think it's really good. But overall, I mean, family resemblance to the car is not quite what you expected Subaru. But I don't think it matters. I think it looks really good anyway. Well, no matter the parentage of the BRZ, the heart of it is pure Subaru. It's a two liter horizontally opposed four cylinder engine, delivers 205 horsepower. And that's not enough to make a rocket ship, but in a light little sports car, this one with a six speed manual transmission, it's plenty. And what I like about this car, again, it's got a nice, nice shift action, feels very mechanical. Feels a little bit like the old Nissan Z, feels a little bit like the Honda S2000. I think it just feels really good. And again, the nice advantage of a horizontally opposed engine is it sits low down in the chassis and it puts weight down close to the ground so you have a lower, lower center of gravity. And that's exactly what you want in a sports car. That's what Porsche does in their sports cars and it makes a lot of sense in a car like this too. So talking about fuel economy, well that's not this car's strong suit. 21 miles per gallon in the city, 29 miles per gallon on the highway. That's not horrible. If you get an automatic transmission, you get about three miles per gallon better. So actually, you know, the old, the old wife's tale is you get a manual that's better gas mileage. It's not really the case in this one. The automatic's actually a little bit better. It's got a limited slip rear differential, which helps you get power to the ground. And I think overall, I think it's just a, it's a fun car. It handles well, you know, the suspension's tight and uh, not, not enough power for what you need in this car. Well, one of the disadvantages of the BRZ compared to like a Miata or the Fiat is you can't get a convertible top on this car. But contrary on the, on the advantages of that side, you do get a pretty roomy cabin. So let's talk about that. You know, plenty of leg room. It's easy to slide in and out of the car. The seat's actually pretty wide and comfortable. It is actually a place where you can ride for a few hours and, and not be miserable at all. In fact, I take this car on a pretty long trip and, and enjoy it. There's a small back seat, so if you need a child seat in the car or need a, need a small child in the back, you do have that option. If I was an adult sitting back there, I wouldn't be very happy very long, but you get you know three or four people to do an ice cream place in back and be okay with that. But when you start looking at the rest of the car, is when you really realize it's not just a pure Subaru. But that's really, again, not a problem. It's just a little bit inconsistent with, it, with the Subaru family. Everything looks good, everything works good. You know, you have to, you have to understand, this thing's built to a price point, so there's, there's some hard plastic in here. And we'll talk about price in a minute, and it's completely appropriate for what this car costs. But this car, we've got dual zone automatic climate control on it, we've got heated seats, we've got the touch screen, um, Bluetooth phone connections, USB, nice leather wrapped steering wheel, I like this a lot. And along with this, I really like the gauges. You know, again, it's kind of laid out like the Porsche. Tech, big tachometer right in the middle, speedometer off on the left. And you've got a digital display that also has a digital speedometer in it. So I think it all works out really well. And again, I think 
it doesn't really matter if it's not exactly consistent with other Subaru products. It works. It just it works really well, and and, and I think this is exactly what the car needed. Well, the BRZ isn't perfect. Fuel economy certainly is not stellar for a car of this weight and power. But I don't suppose you're going to buy a sports car for fuel economy anyway. And the Subaru purists are going to tell you it's not a wheel drive. It'd really be nice to have a turbo on the engine and kind of have a BRZ STI. So there are some things about it that aren't just absolutely ideal. But here's what I think about the car. I don't care who the parents of the car are. It's a light little coupe. It's a relatively comfortable car to drive. You can enjoy it every day. You can take it to the office. You can take it on the highway. It's an enjoyable car. You've got a little back seat, you've got enough luggage space, and it just really is an enjoyable little car to drive. So let's talk about pricing. Starts out at $25.5. Again, a very affordable little sports car. And you know, you're looking at other cars like the Miata and the Fiat that have a convertible top, so you have to get over that. But at $25.5, starting price, very affordable. This one all in with the limited package, $29,660. So even, even completely loaded, still a very affordable car. And I think for most people, I think that's going to be enough. Well, next week we'll have another fun car. And until then, storm forward.